Good move, Mr. Dill. Oh. Hey, everybody. How you doing? And welcome to the Town of the Children's Corner, located in the world of the Magical Couch. I'm Sheriff Stephen J., the Sheriff of Slouch County. Today is the first day of me eating healthy. That's right. At least, try and eat healthy. Well, anyway, I was researching what kind of food can I eat that's healthy. And I discovered fish, which I love to eat, is healthy for you. But while I was researching what kind of fish I can eat, I ran across a fish I've never heard of before. It's called an alewife. You find them on the East Coast. They've been coexisting with other native fish and wildlife for thousands of years. But they live in the ocean and they swim through streams to freshwater lakes to spawn. They have these slender bodies and are grayish green on their back and silvery on their sides and belly. And they've got a single black spot just behind their eye. And they have forked tails. They normally grow to 10 to 11 inches in length and weigh about a half a pound. However, repeat spawners can be as large as 14 inches and weigh a pound or more. Now, you know, I read about these alewives and it reminded me of a town called Nobleboro. And they had a place there called Damariscotta Mills, where to this day, the alewives enter the Damariscotta River in late April from the ocean and arrive at the beginning of their spawning climb to Damariscotta Lake in early May. Now, as these alewives begin their run upstream to the lake, they have the pleasure of experiencing the fish ladder. Now, let me go back and explain what this is. Way back in the year 1729, when the towns of Nobleboro and Newcastle were settled, they built a double sawmill at the head of the falls between freshwater Damariscotta Lake and the tidal headwaters of the Damariscotta River. Now, the dam they built for the sawmill, it blocked the passage from the tidal headwaters where the ocean meets the freshwater to the Damariscotta Lake. So the alewives, they couldn't get to the lake to spawn. Now, people were upset about this. So a law was finally passed in 1741 to open up a passageway for the fish so they could get to the lake. It wasn't until 1807, though, that the two towns built what was called, at that time, the New Stream, but is now known as the Fish Ladder. Now, this Fish Ladder, it has stone walls ranging from 4 to 12 feet high, with the walls backed by concrete and drainage to ensure that it will remain strong for the years to come. And to this day, you know, they're, they're still, they repair it all the time and they, they fix it up. Now, it also has 76 resting pools, okay? And these are separated by weirs. And these weirs are just low dams built across the stream to raise the level of water upstream. So it keeps going up and up and up and up, kind of like locks, I guess. But each of these weirs, they rise 8 to 10 inches between resting pools. It is here at the weirs where the alewives push upstream from one resting pool into another. Now you gotta see them do this. I, I watched them doing this and it was just amazing. They go up a weir, then rest in the adjoining pool, right? Okay. Then they go up the next weir and rest in that pool and so forth and so on until they finally enter the Damariscotta Lake. Now their total climb up the ladder is eh, 42 feet from the bay to the lake. After the alewife spawn, the newborn fish stay in the lake until mid-July through early November. During that time, they'll swim to the ocean in large schools, typically backing down the ladder rather than swimming head first. These uh, juvenile alewives will spend three to four years at sea before maturing fully, and then they'll return to their birthplace, which is Damariscotta Lake, and they'll spawn. Now, they may spawn two or more times, as long as they survive getting eaten by other fish in the sea, of course. And the ones that survive and do spawn two or more times, those are the ones that grow like 14 inches and over a pound. Now, the alewives, they've been caught or harvested at Damariscotta Mills since the early 18th century when the area was first settled. The harvesters, they kind of cheat. They kind of take advantage of the fact that the large schools of fish are sitting at the bottom of the ladder preparing to make the climb. I mean, they're just sitting there. So a portion of the schools, they're crowded over to what's called the dippers. And there are two of these dippers. And what happens is the dippers will have the fish 
and they'll uh, go up on hydraulic. We'll push it up like this and they slide down. It's like a chute. And they all go down here and they land on top of a conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt will take the fish and bring them over to these big bins. And the fish just drop them in. I mean, it's crazy. All these fish just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. It was a, really a bizarre thing. Very interesting. Well, I thought it was interesting. So anyway, I'm just, I guess I got to head over and finish my shift. I only have a few minutes, so I go over there and finish up the sheriff's office. And I got a whole day ahead of me, and um, I, uh, I win. Meet you at the sheriff's office.